So, uh, the second part of the winemaking process um, is the fermenting stage. And uh, we'll first take a view of the whole winemaking process. Uh, then, we will study what happens when the must has been put into the fermenting stainless steel tanks and or in wood barrels. Um, let's start from the last part. So I'll introduce the summary at the beginning, which is another sort of introduction. Just to say that the process of fermenting, racking, clarifying and aging of wines takes place one after the, the other. And uh, we've already learned how the fermentation process starts when the grapes have been crushed. But um, it continues all through the racking, clarifying, and aging stages. In this video, we concentrate on what happens when the grapes have been put into the fermentation stainless steel tanks and or in wood barrels. And uh, we'll see how the fermentation process continues in further stages until it stops. Then, after a period of time, the wine is bottled and it's left to rest for still another period of time. So, bit by bit, let's revise what we've learned before. The one thing that both red and wine uh, making processes have in common as I said before and I insist now, is that bo in both cases the alcoholic fermentation takes place. We've also learned that there are two main differences in the red and white wine making. One has to do with the keeping or removing of leaves, skins and pipes, as I said, and the other has to do with including or not MLF in the process. Um, so, having said this, uh, let's also see what we're going to revise. I insist that we'll do, um, so, um, we'll do use passives. Uh, and uh, what do we use passives for? We'll also revise uh, the words that are used to fix a time moment in relation to another time referring point. Well, I talked about that in the previous slide. And uh, we'll identify the words uh, that um, mean no, when we put in front of other words. Uh, and what's somehow new here is that we'll learn something about the position of adjectives in English. And uh, as usual, we'll learn a new vocabulary as well. So before we go any further, uh, we're going to concentrate in understanding, in really understanding what fermentation is. Fermentation is a process that occurs in the making of medicines, uh, such as antibiotics, and the production of various types of foods, such as cheese, bread, or yogurt. But it also occurs in the making of beer and wine. All these different processes have in common one thing, the chemical changes produced by the metabolism of a microorganism. And now we need to understand first what metabolism is. What is metabolism? Well, uh, it is what happens when we put something nice in our mouth, like a cake, and start chewing it. Then our saliva mixes with the food, and it starts to change uh, the components, the components of what we've put in our mouth. This is the beginning of the digestion process in us humans. A similar interaction also takes place when a microorganism, such as the one in the yeast, uh, interacts with the flour to produce bread, or with milk to turn it sour and uh, make cheese or yogurt, or when the grapes are skinned, get in touch with the pulp of the grape. What is happening there is that the yeast changes in mass and produces alcohol. This has to do with the metabolism of the bacteria in the yeast. Metabolism, after all, is just the, the bacteria's living process. So 
two things about the fermentation stage. Uh, we'll go through these uh, processes one by one. We know that the alcoholic fermentation is a process that changes the sugar in, in, gra in the grapes uh, into alcohol. We also know uh, what is malolactic fermentation, or MLF for short, um, which is a second fermentation that takes place when certain bacteria is put into the juice in the tanks. Then what happens is that MLF converts the malic acid on the of the grapes into lactic acid. And the process gives off a gas. Uh, this gas is called carbon dioxide or CO2. Because the lactic acid is less tart uh, than the malic acid it replaces, uh, the results are that uh, this process, MLF, reduces the acidity in the fermentation grape juice and in the finished wine. Uh, there's a Spanish expert uh, from the research group that I mentioned before that's called Maite Maillo, and her colleagues in her research group explain that the malolactic fermentation is a truly natural biological disadification. Um, but the alcoholic fermentation starts in the grapes and also continues in the must. Um, in the winemaking process, it begins, as I said, uh, with the glucose in the grape, and as I said before, the chemical process changes the glucose from the uh, grape juice uh, into ethyl alcohol and carbon dioxide, and uh, we've said that uh, the microorganism responsible for this chemical uh, change are yeasts. Um, so when the uh, fermentation process uh, continues, uh, let's say something about this microorganism responsible for those chemical uh, change that we call fermentation. The technical name or botanic name of this particular yeast involved in winemaking is Saccharomyces. I'll show it later. This term, like most botanical zoology names, is taken from Latin too. Uh, this complicated Latin term is the name of the bacteria that produces the fermentation of the grape juice. Um, look at this new slide. Um, see the skins of the grapes uh, where the bacteria lives. Notice the whitish layer on the grapes. This is exactly the yeast. The bacteria it contains is what will change the mass into wine. Uh, let's have a look at a microscopic view or photograph of the yeast bacteria. It's not very um, clear, but it shows how the, the yeast or the yeast bacteria um, get together in, 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 in round or mm, sort of roundish uh, forms. Um, let me tell you something about the genus Saccharomyces, because as, as a genus includes different types of yeast. It's a kind of fungi. Uh, there was a tradition in the Western culture of writing important things such as religious matters in the Middle Ages and in the Renaissance, uh, to writing important things such as religious matters or scientific things in Latin. Um, and finally, it turned out to be a good thing after all, because it avoided disputes about whether to use English, Italian, or Swedish. Anyway, um, going back to the Saccharomyces, uh, and uh, I'm summing up, uh, there is a chemical process that changes uh, the glucose of the grape into juice, uh, the grape uh, juice into ethyl alcohol or CO2 as, as gas. But there are other things that happen um, in the fermentation process at this stage. Um, the chemical fermentation process also gives out heat. And this means that the temperature increases. And because of this, it's important that temperature shouldn't go above 37.7 degrees Celsius. If this happens, 
then the, the fermenting yeast or bacteria um, is killed and it gives off odors uh, and uh, it's very nasty. The other important thing that happens is that for fermentation to take place at this particular time, there has to be no oxygen in there. So the tanks where this process takes place must have only uh, have uh, one-way valves for the CO2 to get out and uh, no oxygen to get in. So uh, one-way valves uh, are important um, to be uh, clean and well um, um, taken care of when, when, when this process is taking place. Um, another important thing is um, that while the spices of yeast are often present in the skins of the grapes, um, they pr produce unwelcome odors when they ferment glucose into alcohol. To avoid this, uh, winemakers add a chemical called uh, sulfur dioxide to kill wild yeast, not the good yeast, but bad ye yeast. Um, this chemical addition is more important in white wine making than in red wine making. Um, and uh, now, into um, linguistic terms, a final note on the difference between British and American spelling of the word sulfur. In uh, British English, um, it's uh, with PH, and in American English, it's just sulfur. As usual, Americans are more practical. Um, now, let's learn a little bit more about a malolactic fermentation, or MLF for short. Uh, this is the second type of fermentation after the alcoholic type of fermentation. This new fermentation happens because another bacteria is inoculated, is put into the tanks, into the juice in the tanks and it changes the malic acid into lactic acid. We have learned how MLF reduces the acidity both in the must and in the finished wine. Because of this, uh, I insist that MLF is a natural biological desertification. Um, when does fermentation finish? When does it finish? Fermentation is finished when all the glucose uh, has been converted into alcohol. Now the winemaking process continues with the removal of lees. <coughs> Let's see a little bit more about this now. This process of racking and clarification uh, is a procedure uh, where we first wait for the particles to form lees on the top of the, of the Master or liquid. Then those links go to the bottom. Um, uh, this leaves this all of them uh, uh, go to the bottom of the tanks and barrels. This happens thanks to the force of gravity. And this stage is called settling because they settle down there. Then the clarification process begins. Uh, the wine goes to a clean container for further filtering and clarification. And uh, just note that filtering needs machines to filter, in, fil to filter the wine. And um, then the fining and stabilization processes uh, follow. Um, and after that, the important part of aging begins. Um, so, just a brief uh, summary now, uh, we've learned um, that there are two types of fermentation. Uh, all in all, we've learned a lot about uh, the process of wine making. We have studied the different stages in the production of white and red wines, what part of the process is common for both kinds of wine production, such as the crushing and the alcoholic fermentation, and what differentiates the white wine making and the red wine making. We've also learned why the use of the passive voice in English 
helps us to focus on the process rather than on the speaker or writer. And we have also learned uh, something about adjectives in English. And um, next, uh, no more comments on the credits, uh, just uh, the same reference as, uh, as in the previous slides. And um, thanks for watching. Thank you.